Welcome to this video, which is a part of my short series on supplement precautions. Recently, I launched a video on excessive vitamin D consumption. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I also always talk about how I strongly discourage the use of probiotics and fermented foods in those who are dysbiotic. See practically all of my videos on this theme. The point in these videos is just because we're working with supplements, it doesn't mean that they are only healthy or, at worst case, just benign. Any given supplement, or at least inappropriate doses, is not the correct decision for all people. But for now, we'll be talking about fish oil. The recommended intake for fish oil is basically no more than 3 grams per day of the combination of EPA and DHA. That's not that much, and may even be too much in some people. When you read about the risks of excess fish oil consumption, they usually reference atrial fibrillation, increased chance of bleeding, or something else. But in the spirit of my videos, I'll supply you with information you've unlikely seen before. I also always mention how it's all connected. Your vasculature, kidneys, blood sugar metabolism, liver, microbiome, and more are all connected in health or in illness. If ill, there is a persistent state of oxidation and inflammation. Fish oil is not olive oil. Olive oil, apart from the many phytochemicals, is a very stable monounsaturated fatty acid. Because of this, you can consume much larger volumes of it. Whereas the omega-3 fatty acids in fish oil are highly unstable. If you introduce them into the healthy person, the body is able to compensate for this and derive a health benefit. However, if you introduce them to a person who already has a lot of oxidation and inflammation, then it's an extra burden, especially if the fish oil is of low quality. Here is our first of several papers which highlight the risk of supplemental fish oil in those with blood sugar issues. Fish oil resulted in an increase of 14% and fasting blood glucose. The authors went on to state, quote, dietary fish oil supplementation adversely affected glycemic control in type 2 diabetes. The rationale behind this next study was, as the authors state, quote, the initial enthusiasm for the use of omega-3 fatty acids in diabetes was modified by reports of potentially deleterious effects. These adverse effects were achieved with large, possibly excessive doses of omega-3 fatty acids in the range of 4 to 10 grams per day. So, they use only about 2.5 grams per day of fish oil as compared to safflower oil, not exactly a healthy comparator, and looked at cardiovascular risks. While fish oil did decrease triglycerides, a common finding, it also significantly increased hemoglobin A1c. They went on to state, quote, while fish oil may improve numerous cardiovascular risk factors in the non-diabetic population, it might be unsafe for the diabetic population. In yet another trial, 5.5 grams of omega-3 fatty acids resulted in a significant increase of fasting glucose of 19%, along with other changes which led to their statement that, quote, omega-3 fatty acid treatment in type 2 diabetes leads to rapid but reversible metabolic deterioration with elevated basal hepatic glucose output and impaired insulin secretion, but unchanged glucose disposal rates. Caution should be used when recommending omega-3 fatty acids in type 2 diabetic persons. In this study, as well as the previous, fasting glucose returned to normal after the discontinuation of the fish oil. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and recommend to friends and family. Also, if you're feeling extra generous, hit the super thanks below. There are a number of other individual research papers which show the same types of results, but here we have a review paper on the topic. These authors go on to state, quote, omega-3s in fish oil appear to be no longer efficacious once type 2 diabetes is established. Supplementation of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids to premenopausal non-diabetic female subjects 
was reported to markedly decrease the insulin response to an oral glucose load in those with a high level of inflammatory indexes, whereas the effect was less and not significant in those with low inflammatory status. In other words, as I began this video, those who are already in a pro-oxidative, pro-inflammatory state should exercise caution or simply avoid fish oil supplements altogether. Their capacity to compensate for unstable fish oil supplementation is already exhausted due to their health status. And fish oil, like any other product, has different levels of quality and price points. In this study with these authors, understanding the biochemical connection between oxidizable fish oil and health status, looked at serum lipids as it pertained to fish oil of different levels of oxidation. The total level of EPA plus DHA was only 1.6 grams per day, a small amount. You can see some findings in figure 3. They also state that the oxidized fish oil they used was comparable to many commercially available supplements. Perhaps it's best to avoid fish oil supplements if you have problems controlling your blood sugar, or if you are in a highly inflamed state. Maybe just eat some wild-caught, fresh, cold-water fish. I personally don't recommend fish oil. The people with whom I work, on average, have a lot of going on health-wise. And fish oil is not going to drive significant change in these people. And yet, without fish oil, I get great results. When you understand the data and biochemistry, you can achieve your health goals. So perhaps with this video, maybe I can save you some money as well as highlight the connection between omega-3s and those who have trouble with blood sugar metabolism. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, somewhere around here, you can go to my website where you can schedule a consultation with me. You can also view the protocols. And here, you can watch the next video.